Hello everyone and welcome back to Commu. Let's continue. I didn't learn anything. I call Kuduri Senpai to give her the news. Yes, yes, I'm sorry, it's all my fault. I should have done better and I'll think about how to do better next time. It's good enough for her, she still owes me a ton of favors. After calling Kurudi, my search for Herm is over. That's right, Mayuki, could you text me this address? It's Herm's son's side with an unfinished sample of Acceptor N. Well, that's a shame. I'm sick of objecting to that. Passionate eyes. Do you two like toying with me that much? You don't need to do that. Mayuki pulls up an email suit I've never seen before and quickly texts me the address I wanted. Thank you. I guess I'll kill some time with it. Awesome. They did call me a demon several times. I tear up as I recall the shrieks of the Balbaloy. Shut up! Acceptor N, I'm quite curious to see what it's like. The next morning, Ayaya gazes intently at the br bread rotating inside the microwave. Who puts bread inside a microwave? <laughs> the bag around it bursts and Ayaya jumps. What are you doing? She apparently forgot to put holes in it. Last night I rewatched the DVD properly since it has a due date and I don't want to pay the fee. I was thinking of starting on Acceptor this morning, but Ayaya showed up. Not really. I take the bread out of the microwave. That was a worrying noise, but it seems fine. A classic hot dog with a curry and cabbage. You can't surf the internet or play games without junk food. I nibble on the bread as I open Mayuki's text from yesterday. So I did receive it. I like to avoid as much work as possible. Ayaya bought bread for both of us on her way here today. Okay, you want yours warmed up too? No, her warm eyes and my cold eyes. You never know when the witch might appear in this room, so stay on guard. I take out the red bean bread she bought for herself and hand her that along with a carton of milk. Acceptor N downloads. I follow the URL in Mayuki's text and find myself at a similarly plain page. I right click the download link and save the zip file. It takes a little over 3 minutes to download. My connection to the server must be bad. Hmm, this is a pretty good hot dog. Poppy seeds. <laughs> oh well. I continue eating my hot dog as I make fun of Ayaya. My only criticism is that the mustard isn't all that strong. They were probably trying to make it appeal to a broader range of palettes. Once the download's done, I unzip the file. It doesn't have an installer. Internet people value their privacy, so they probably like it that way. Okay, let's see how this goes. I double click on it and the window opens up, music starts playing and text starts scrolling right away. 
Evidently, this game wants to have an intro scene before showing the opening movie and main menu. It looks pretty professional. This looks like something that could be sold in stores. The internet is really interesting in that way. They do Kaname runs. From shadow to shadow in a city of darkness, he evades their gazes like a wild animal in flight. He doesn't say a word because there's no need. He doesn't even breathe. His body lets him run without breathing. His shoulders have a metallic glint in the car's headlights as he passes by them. He didn't ask for this, but he can throw it away. So Kaname runs, trying to get away. He can't go back to his old body, even if he could, he needed to fulfill his duty first. He made a mistake, he was foolish and overly idealistic. Regret makes his chest hurt slightly, Kaname's mouth twists slightly beneath his expressionless mask. k kya! He hears a shriek that could tear through silk. The girl's voice, his superhuman hearing, allows him to hear her breathing after the scream. She's in mortal danger right now. I'm not the only one who can save her, but my objective is something only I can do, because only I have this inhuman body. I can't risk letting people see me, I have to abandon her. That's what logic and reason tells me, but... I foolishly stop wasting all of the sprinting I'd been doing. My hearing picks up yet more voices begging for help. Help me! Someone help me! I curse my illogical emotions and start moving again. I run like a hurricane into the narrow alleyway. I arrive in a shadowy back alley. He! What? What? Another monster? Why won't my phone work? D Daddy? Three girls and. <laughs> its mouth resembles that of a rabbit dog, with drool leaking out between its bare fangs. Its acidic saliva produces small clouds of steam as it drips on the ground. It's clearly a monster. An unbearable sense of disgust wells up in my gut. This thing is one of my friends. What? Ugh. Calling it a friend makes me want to spit. This is a monster. It no longer has any trace left of its former humanity. So there's only thing. So there's only one thing for me to do. No, this was always what I had to do. Hound and remorph. Target locked on. Exterminating. Gah! The monster roars, forgetting about the terrified girls. Trying to help them is already illogical. I can't allow them to get hurt as well. My objectives are to eradicate of, uh, all of these andromorphs and not let anyone see me, that's all. The monster's eyes have no rationality. It senses danger from me and charges on instinct alone. I stole data on all my targets when I escaped the organization. The dangers hidden in these monsters are far more beastly than the shining claws on their hands and feet. If those fangs hit me, the acid from their venom glands will be all it takes to finish me off. I slide forward silently and vanish before the monster reaches me. I bend down, slipping beneath its arm. I get behind it and kick it in its center of gravity while it's bent over. <laughs> the monster gives a muffled scream and falls to the ground a moment later. I'm already moving. A shadow falls over the monster's back. Go! Yeah! A heavy heel pounds into the gap between its shoulder blades, which jut out like ungrown wings. I twist my body, let my body fall forward, and clutch the monster's neck. Muscles erupt from both my arms, producing superhuman power. Exterminate target! Gah! Its muscles twist and its bones break, break. The monster's thick neck bends upward with an irritating sound. I hop off the monster and walk away, but the small shadows on the ground still won't move. Wah! Ah! 
The monster's corpse will soon rot and start to melt. The organization made them this way to help keep them secret. It involves some special microorganisms. The dead body will be thoroughly dissolved in only a few minutes. I don't have to worry about the monster's body. What I have to worry about are the women I carelessly saved. I approached the three girls. They are still frozen, unable to understand what happened. I could deactivate my powers and try to look like a normal human, but I shouldn't show them my real face. This might be an unreasonable request, but... I tried to sound as non-threatening as possible. The worst thing that can happen is them screaming and running around. If they do that, I'll have to kill them too, even though I just saved their lives. Please forget everything you saw tonight. That includes me and this monster. I can't blame them for being speechless. If I was in their position, I doubt I'd be much different. I consider telling them not to expose our secrets and to stay away from the organization to avoid further danger, but I stop there. Using more words won't make it any easier to understand. I can't stop them from telling someone about this and getting erased, erased by the organization. It was a mistake to save them tonight. These girls would have simply died here if I hadn't intervened. I can't keep protecting them. Doing so isn't important enough to ignore my real objective. I'm making excuses to myself. I only have one true goal. Th that was amazing! W -w 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 We've been saved by a real hero! This is real? No CGI? No wires? No nothing? Is this guy a rider? Or a space cop? Huh? So you're a nocturnal hero with no particular category. I mean, <clears throat> before all of that, my train of thought derails. They aren't in shock. What does this mean? Are they aware of the organization? I think we should introduce ourselves. Miyu-san, Momo-san. I'll go first. My name is Sumeragi Kurage. Pleased to meet you. Oh, you're right, Kurage-chan. I'm Sasaki Miyu. So, Oni-san, are you augmented or is it more like Inspector Gadget? Thank you so much for saving us. Um, well, uh, I'm Himehara Momo. Um, Thank you. They are not enemies? Then what are they? I can't understand this. Unisan, what's your name? Ah, if your identity is a secret, you can just tell us your hero name instead. But, but, we'd really like to know your real name. You did just save Momo's life after all. She's right. It'll be hard to talk to you if we don't know your name. So, are you trying to stay secret? Think wishing evil without letting anyone know about it. That's what it means to be a hero. I wonder if he has any secret bases underground. Uh, if you don't have any safe houses, we can hide you at our place, hero son. There's no need to talk to them anymore. No matter what they say, I can just turn around and walk away. But I can't resist the urge to ask them. Who the hell are you? Why? Aren't you confused by what just happened? I mean, you almost seem to be enjoying this. The girls smile when I ask that. I haven't seen humans smile in years. We're Tokusatsu Otaku. Normal people don't know those terms. We are friends who like dramas and other shows with a lot of special effects in them. That makes it even less clear. I'm into hero shows. Does that make more sense, Unisan? <laughs> so will you tell us your name? I am Batman. I do exactly what they want, as if I'm being controlled by them. The inside of my mask has sensors to detect illusions and mind control, but they're not helping. I'm Reido Kaname. For some reason, I answer their question directly. Mm, mm. My shoulders are stiff, so I, str so I stretch for a minute. I turn my neck a few times, then look at the time through my mostly empty bottle. It's been quite a while. There's only one bite of hot dog left on my desk. I've been engrossed for a long time without even realizing it. The bread is dry and stiff now. I put the last bite into my mouth and wash it down with what's left of my lukewarm carbonated beverage. It sounded really serious at the beginning. He takes things too seriously. Those otaku girls are gonna walk all over him. I feel a strange sympathy for him. Maybe I need to rethink my own circle of friends. No, I'm gonna read a bit more. Oh, 
I finished my drink, so I'll keep going until my throat gets dry. After making that decision, I return my hand to the mouse. They dragged uh, Kaname to a safe house that Kurage was able to provide because her father's rich. They said it just had to be a cafe, which didn't make a lot of sense to me. Kaname doesn't seem to understand it either. I still think his transformation pose is important. I don't want to draw attention to myself and to the enemy is already against me. Taking the time to provoke them like that would only give them the advantage. The cafe is closing up for today. We sit down at the booth in the corner so we can talk about what to do next. The bad guys always wait for the hero to finish his dramatic pose. But exterminating them quickly ensures minimal casualties. You want to help girls in danger, right? It's so cool when she goes, Kya, help me! The hero says, that's enough! And the bad guy goes, who the hell are you? And he's got to strike a pose when he says, that's enough! No, my enemies are no longer intelligent creatures. We can't expect them to react like humans. I have no idea why any of this is relevant to what we do from now on. Well, I guess technically it is, but... Then how about using your ultimate move on them, then turning around and striking a pose as they explode? That's right, maybe he could say something like, Huh, evil is defeated. I knew you would understand Kodagi-chan. Enemies always explode when the hero finishes them off and turns around to strike a pose. As you know, I don't want anyone knowing who I am. When my target is exterminated, my priority is to immediately hide. Then maybe strike a pose before using your ultimate move? Before all that, I don't even have anything that you could call an ultimate move. Eh? Eh? Not even one? But you're a hero! This can't be. We must make one for you right away. This is a huge problem. You can't save damsels in distress without using ultimate moves to defeat evil. The three girls remain excited. It would seem that ultimate moves are very important to them. I think it has to be a kick. I agree that a kick would be a good idea. Gotta be a kick! Why a kick? I'm completely lost. Apparently hero stuff needs an ultimate kick of some kind. The three girls insist on it. Kicks are nostalgic. Kicks are vital. I can have other techniques, but I must have a kick. It just has to be that way. Sorry, but I don't think they'll explode. Eh? Then how about putting gunpowder on your shoes? But, but, then his feet will get burned. In that case, we'll add uh, the explosions with CG after what? I'm not a big fan of CG explosions, though. Fire laws are pretty strict these days, so there's not, not much choice. CG? CG? Are they talking about shooting a movie now? <laughs> when I take a break after a long period of intense focus. A threatening shadow appears in the window. Ayaya strikes the battle pose against the shadow, completely under the influence of what we just read. It's probably Kagome, isn't it? The slender shadow opens the window from the outside and intrudes, except through Ayaya freezes. Oh. I knew it. As I thought, it's Kagome. Except true, Ayaya is clearly too weak to defeat any real-life monsters. Give it up, Kohai-kun. This witch is a real cyborg, so you can't beat her without transforming. A scornful smile. She would make a lot more sense if there was a special effects crew running around with her. Kagome begins stripping. <laughs> As usual, she doesn't seem to care that we're around. This isn't good for my eyes. We'll do that next time on Commu. Thanks for watching everyone and have a nice day. Bye bye.